upon a time, model trains were a bustling business, a must-have for kids at Christmas time. While the hobby has cooled off in recent years and the internet has changed how models are sold, there is still one destination here in New York for model train enthusiasts. Matt King found it and the man whose immense knowledge powers the business. We have a lot of airplanes, I would say. Die cast and collectible civilian planes are important. Right to boost hobbies. Alan Spitz treats the listed opening and closing times of his Midtown hobby shop as approximations. He once locked a still browsing customer in his basement store and then left for the night. I don't, that is true, yes. One time. A recording of a railroad crossing bell guides customers inside from 45th Street and down two flights of stairs to walls of cases filled with model locomotives, train cars, and other vehicles coated in dust and organized in a way few but Allen can comprehend. Lose track of things? Yes, absolutely. The, the other day, oh, that was there all the time. From the underground where Ma Webster, the matriarch of the hobby industry, held court from a full-size Pullman car nearly 70 years ago, Allen now runs what he deems the only remaining full-line hobby shop in Manhattan. On this block at the high watermark, there were four stores selling nothing but model trains. Today, guys like Mel Hazen, who started playing with model trains in 1948, pilgrimage to the Red Caboose from Jacksonville, Florida, just to buy $400 of train books from Allen. I have a whole room full of trains, and I've got six hanging from the ceiling in the dining room that I can run when I have time. Holiday train shows like the one at Grand Central bring Allen a younger generation of railroaders. If they wish to buy their first train set in person, they too must navigate his labyrinth and pay tribute to its only full-time resident, Lionel the Cat. It's actually a, you know, a, a reasonably a useful selling aid. Internet killed the hobby shop, but in one Manhattan basement, we find a survivor. Which is a very specialized turnout that's equilateral. Red Caboose attracts customers from all over the world looking for obscure parts, vintage pieces, and to ask Alan some questions whenever he decides to open up. Yes, actually, I'm fairly inured to work. Yes, I like it. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Well suited to my vocation, yes. Well suited to his vocation. Matt King joining us live in the studio. Alan is such an interesting guy. How did you find him? One of my friends works in advertising and she needed uh, a model train set for a shoot and there's only one place left to go and she said, you need to go and meet this man and do something with him. So you traveled those two flights down the steps and really found an international destination. What is it like to be there? This is a good example of one of those things that because you don't collect trains and I don't collect trains, we might not think it's that, pop that popular. But while we were there, it was a nonstop flow of people and there's not room for a lot of people down there. There's room for about three people and it was just packed. Did you meet anybody from outside the U.S. while you were there? Uh, some Brazilians, some Italians. I guess uh, Brazil is the nationality that's sort of most into this, I guess. So who knew? Go figure. Who knew? Yeah. Matt King, thanks for that. That was so cool.